Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and today we are going to show you the basic configuration and actual performance of the TP-Link EAP-110 and I would like to say thanks to our friends at TP-Link Philippines for providing us with this unit. Now, let us check what are the things that are included in the box. We have the documentation, the mounting screw, the mounting bracket, passive POE adapter, cable tie, power cord, antennas, and the actual unit itself. Now for the specifications, antennas are 3 dvi omnidirectional, Ethernet ports is pass Ethernet up to 100 Mbps, durable, weatherproof, enclosure for outdoor Wi-Fi, capable of creating multiple SSID up to 8 SSID, SSID to VLAN mapping, and a lot more to mention. Now we are going to configure the EAP-110. If you don't want to see the configuration and overview of the management console, and who wants to jump to the actual test, go to this timeline. Okay, first things first, plug the PoE adapter on a wall outlet and get your source of internet. This one will be our source of internet that is directly connected to our modem router. Plug it on the LAN port. It indicates LAN. Plug it in there. Then get another LAN cable. For this one, this will be the one on the PoE. And from that PoE, it will be the one connected to the main access point or the EAP-110. Pull that one down and plug the port on the bottom. Close it to make it sure that it won't get wet when it rains. Okay, right now we are using my desktop to configure the EAP-110. And first things first, let us try to connect to the SSID or the default SSID of that EAP-110, which is the TP-Link underscore 2.4 GHz underscore E33F2. Then, hit on connect. Then after that one, it is automatically configured that you will be able to connect to the internet. Like for example, let us try to click on this one and try to search TP-Link. As you can see, we already have our internet access the first time we access that or connect to that EAP-110. Okay, and it is actually working. Now, let us try to configure the EAP-110 with the Web Management Console. To access the Web Management Console of that EAP-110, you just need to enter tp-link eap.net. Okay, then after that one, it will redirect you to the main login page. For the default username and password, it will be admin, admin, and enter. Then after that one, let us click on never, then you need to create a new username for your admin account. So for now, let us retain the admin username and the password. Let us change this one to something more complex. As you can see, it indicated that the password that we have set is actually high. So click on next. Then after that one, for the wireless basic settings, 2.4 GHz wireless radio, it is enabled and the SSID is EAP110. That's our settings for now. And the password as well, let's say 1234567890. Then you can actually skip this one if you want. So there will be no password for your access point. But for us, let us try to put a password for this one and hit save. Okay, after that one, you will be redirected to the EAP-110. Unfortunately, we have already set up our EAP-110 earlier. We have tested this one, so we have already entered our password for this. So we just need to hit connect. We have entered 12345678890. And after you have connected, just tick the box. I have connected to the wireless network and hit finish. Okay, and click on ever then we are now on the main management console of the EAP 110 
while we are here on the web management console let us try to check what are the things that we can actually do with this access point but guys remember we won't be doing a detailed version of the configuration because it will actually take a long time to create and of course a long video which can be boring for you for now let us try to check the status under the status you have your device this is the device information the basic information and also the wireless the basic information the wireless and you can see here the ssid list if you have created more than one ssid it will appear here and also the client under the client you'll be able to see the list of devices currently connected to your access point even on the ssid where they are actually connected and of course if you have created a guest ssid you'll be able to see them here as well now let us go to the wireless tab under the wireless tab you have here the 2.4 gigahertz wireless radio because this is just a single band and you can enable and disable this one if you want in the second one this is the part where you can actually create another ssid for your guests or just another ssid if you want like just click add you'll be able to add the ssid and the security mode for the security mode you'll be able to add wpa enterprise or personal or none if you want then if you want to make it as a guest network it will not be able to communicate from any other private ip that you have and of course rate limit which is you can actually give them just a specific bandwidth for upload and download but for now let us cancel this one but for guys who are going to use this as an access point for their piece of wi-fi business definitely you need to disable the security mode because your piece of wi-fi machine already have the authentication for your piece of wi-fi business so to do that one you just need to click this pencil icon then security mode click none then click ok then hit save but for now we won't be doing that one or it will actually reconfigure the settings now going to the portal for the portal this is another configuration if you are actually uh, trying to configure or give a pre or a business wi-fi access to anybody in your area this is actually used advertise your uh, website or portal you can actually redirect them as soon as they are already connected to your wi-fi redirect them to that portal or maybe a youtube channel then aside from that one for the vlan you can actually enable vlan tagging for this one for now it is disabled you can actually assign the vlan id for the mac filtering it is also applicable for the devices that you want to uh, deny their access on your access point and the scheduler this is actually uh, for turning off or turning on the radio if you want then we have here the QoS for the QoS which is the quality of service you can uh, priority which is the top one which is voice or maybe video or best effort or background or any other configuration that you want and you also have a rogue AP detection on this one then going to the management tab under the management tab this is just the basic uh, settings like for the network for the ip settings you can create a dhcp payback ip in case you need it and system lag and of course web server management access and this actually is helpful if you want to be more secure with your access point and the led control if you want to turn off or turn on the led on the access point but i believe it should always be turned on so you will know from afar if you're actually putting this one on your roof you'll be able to see that oh it's working because there is an led light then aside from that one we have here the ssh and snmp then lastly would be the system tab under the system tab you can actually rename or change the user management account then aside from that one you have here the controller settings time settings reboot and reset if you want to reset to factory default the eap 110 backup and restore if you want to save the configuration that you've already created and maybe use it in a later time then firmware update is also available on this tab now we are going with the actual test outside our house since this is an outdoor access point for the test we will do an internet speed test up to 100 meters and try gaming and of course browsing and watching online videos okay guys and right now we are going to perform a speed test outside the house and as you can see this is a crowded wi-fi environment and right now we are connected to the e8110 and let's do a speed test
and right now we are getting 83 mbps for download while 61.4 for upload now moving to the 10 meters range okay for the 10 meters range go okay and right now we are getting 30.8 download and 16.2 upload for the 10 meters now for the 20 meter range and we are getting 27.6 for download while 19.4 for upload now for the 30 meters range We are getting 24 Mbps for download while 8.77 for upload. Now for the 40 meters range. We are getting 21.6 Mbps for download while 5.42 Mbps for upload. Now for the 50 meters. We are getting 10.7 for download while 4.87 for upload. Now for the 60 meters range. We are getting 14.9 download and 4.75 upload. Now for the 70 meters range. We still have signal and speed test. We are getting 3.76 per download while 0.25 per upload. And as you can see, we still have connection to the EAP110. We are connected and the signal strength is actually good. Now, going to the 80 meters range. And we are getting 25.6 for download while 9.48 for upload on the 80 meters range. Now on the 90 meters range. And yes, we are still getting 24.6 for download while 8.18 for upload. And the 100 meters range. It's actually far. And we are still getting 19.3 for download while 3.03 for upload. And let's try to hit more than 100. How about this one? We still have a signal and let's hit go. By estimate, this is already in 120 meters range and we are getting 3.36 for download while 0.63 for upload.
Now for the 100 meters range, let us try to check if it is actually usable. And of course, the other administration. And now, we didn't encounter it. It is an affordable Wi-Fi 6 router. And in case the range is still not enough for you, this route... So let's try... TPD. And as you can see, it is working and we are connected to the EAP-110 and not to mobile data. Like for example, EAP-110. As you can see, it is actually working on the 100 meters range. Okay, you have seen the actual test. Let me give you more details about the test. First, for the speed test. If you notice, there are some areas where we are getting more speed compared to the area that is actually near the access point. Like the 80 meters range is actually getting better internet speed compared to the 40 meters up to 70 meters because those areas have a lot of apartments and a lot of Wi-Fi network and a lot of Wi-Fi network equates to Wi-Fi interference. But nonetheless, we are able to hit a 100 meters range with the EAP-110. Okay, you might say that checking on the TP-Link website, it was mentioned 200 meters. I believe that 200 meters is actually radii. And per actual image on the website, the EAP-110 is on the middle of the 200 meters. So meaning radius is 100 and the other side will be 100, totaling to 200 meters. Okay, now with the gaming performance. For gaming on a wireless network, definitely the closer you are to the access point, the better the latency. But the EAP-110 performance is actually great. We are able to play mobile legends up to 60 meters. Even though it is a double digit latency, it is working. But for smooth and very minimal spikes, I would really recommend playing around less than 40 meters. Another thing is make sure that your device is on line of sight with the access point because any interference like a tree or a car in between your device and the access point would create a bad latency. And if you are watching closely on the video earlier, just by turning my back on the access point, my latency spikes. But as soon as I turn again to the access point, my latency is back to normal. By this time, you might be confused because on our speed test, we can do a speed test up to 100 meters. But I'm recommending playing online games on 40 meters and below. Okay, gaming is actually different from browsing and watching streaming videos. In gaming, if you spike to 3-digit latency, the next thing you know, your character is already dead. While on browsing or watching, it will eventually load. But guys, don't get me wrong. You have seen the actual performance of browsing and watching YouTube video on a 100 meters range. It was smooth. It was not loading or buffering. It works great. Now for my verdict and recommendation. Guys, you have seen on how it performs. No need to tell you if this is a great choice or not. Will I recommend it? Definitely, yes. This access point will definitely occupy a large outdoor area and really easy to configure. For PISO Wi-Fi business, you need a stable and reliable access point so your customers will keep on coming back. And this is actually a solution. This is not a marketing script because if you are actually following my channel, we have created a video before, side-by-side -side actual test of EAP-110 with another access point. Even on the 10 meters range, we are encountering a connection issue with Brand X access point. You can check that video as well, but I apologize for the quality of that video because those were the early days, but you will actually see on what I'm talking about. And I think that will be all. If you have comments and suggestions, comment down below or message me at JK Chavez on FB. Again, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Stay safe and bye.